All right, it's time for another board game video. And this time it's the topic of board games for people who are new to board gaming. So for those of you out there who have played a lot of board games like me, you can probably have a very good shot at guessing the games that I'm about to recommend. Uh, and you might be like, oh boy, I gotta watch, oh, Ticket to Ride, blah, 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 blah. Uh, well, guess what? Not every video is for you you fucker. So how about you shut up and get out of here? Anyways, I tackled this list by the criteria of what is a board game that I could teach my parents, especially my mom, which I love my mom. She's great, but she has no patience or attention span for learning board games, which is fine. That's fine. But all of these games here, and some of them I have taught her, um, are games that even she can learn. I also wanted to go with the criteria of games that felt board gamey. For example, Telestrations is a really fun party game, but it doesn't really feel like a board game. Essentially, it's everyone drawing or drawing pictures and stuff. But I wanted to come up with five board games where it's like, hey, I'm completely new to the hobby. I'm interested to like learn mechanics and stuff like that, but I don't want to dive, you know, way into the deep end too soon. What are some games that have some like interesting mechanics that are above your typical monopoly, you know, risk bullshit, but are still accessible? So these are five games that are accessible and also, most importantly, games that I enjoy. Uh, so let's just uh, get down to it. Number one, I already spoiled, but it is Ticket to Ride. Uh, yeah, it's the very famous Ticket to Ride game. I'm sure all of you have at least heard of it in some capacity. If you don't know what it is, essentially you're building train routes uh, across a map. Maybe it's America, maybe it's Europe, it depends on what version you're playing. There's about 1,000 versions of this game. But what I like about this game is that it's very easy to teach. You're trying to make specific routes to specific cities, and on your turn you can basically uh, build a route, or pick up colored cards, or get new routes. That's basically it. Turns in this game are super, super quick, um, and because of that, uh, the game runs very smoothly, even if someone is kind of totally new to the idea of board games. Not only that, but it's a very satisfying game. It's very satisfying collecting colors of cards and building routes and watching your sort of network of train routes build out and, you know, getting more destinations marked off. Uh, it's just a very well-designed game that is very accessible. I always enjoy playing it. It's, never, it's not a game where I'm like, oh, I gotta play Ticket to Ride. It's fun. It's not too long easy to teach, uh, and very quick play. I highly recommend it. Tick to Ride. That's not how you hold it. Ticket to Ride. And like I said, there's about one million versions. If you don't want America, you can get Europe. If you don't want Europe, you can get Germany or India. There's just any kind of map you could imagine. Now, I will say, though, uh, some other versions of the game are more complicated. Like, Europe actually adds some different mechanics. Um, I just played Marklin recently, and that adds like a new, like a passenger mechanic. So if you want a game um, that is the easiest to teach, I would recommend the first game, Ticket to Ride um, USA. But if you play this game and really enjoy it, there's all sorts of maps and stuff out there for you to enjoy. It also won the Spiel de Jahr, which is a very prestigious German board game reward. So you know what's good, because Germans love board games. Going off Ticket to Ride, which is a game I taught my parents successfully, another game I taught them was Splendor. Splendor is also a very easy game to teach. You have piles of colored tokens, and you're picking tokens to get collect, so you can buy jewel cards. And those jewel cards, you can use the jewels on those cards to help you buy more cards in addition to your colored tokens. Um, that's it. Very, very quick turns, easy to learn. Like on your turn, you can pick up colors or get cards, like buy the cards or pick up a card and save it. Very simple. Again, I really appreciate games where I can teach them to someone who has never played a complex game so that they're not, you know, falling asleep during my explanation. Listen, I love games like that. I love games that have like an hour explanation. Don't get me wrong. But if I'm playing with a crowd of people who are totally new to this, um, then Splendor is something that's easy to pull out. Some people might say, why not Century Spice Road or something like that? I think Century Spice Road is a also a very light game and very good, but I think it's just a little bit more complicated than Splendor. Uh, I might prefer that game over Splendor, but if I were to choose a game for someone who is kind of brand new to the hobby, I think Splendor uh, is an easy, 
choice. I like. I think the mechanics are very simple and elegant. Uh, it may be severely lacking in theme. In fact, it almost doesn't have a theme at all. It's just get colors, get cards, get more cards. Um, but it's fun. I still enjoy this game. Um, probably, I'm a little sick of it because I played it about 1,000 times last Christmas while I was visiting my parents. But I do still think it's a good game. Also, the app is actually really good. If you, uh, and Ticket to Ride has a really good app too. If you want to try these games before buying them, Ticket to Ride and Splendor both have good apps that I really enjoyed and played way too much of. This next game is probably the most complex game I have on this list, but I really enjoy it. This is a game that I actually love playing every single time I play it, and that is Azul. Azul is a little hard to explain without basically showing you with the pieces, but the idea of the game is that you have these sort of uh, circles of tiles, and you're picking a specific color of tiles from one of them, or, and moving the other pieces from into the middle. Or, if there are pieces in the middle, you can take tiles of one color from the middle. And essentially, you're putting them in this little sort of tiled grid, and you're filling up rows of squares and sliding them over for points once you fill them. Uh, and there's, like, strategy to, like, um, oh, if I slide a tile over and it's adjacent to other tiles I already have, I get combo points. Um, much easier to understand if you actually have the pieces in front of you, but this game is really, really good. First of all, I love the components a lot. It, they are really nice tiles, really colorful. Um, it feels like a nice kind of tactile experience. It feels like, like a Mahjong type, type of game. It's like, oh, this game's been around for like uh, hundreds of years and uh, just like elegant design and feels good putting tiles on a board. So just by aesthetics, I think it's appealing and people will be like, ooh, like what, are, what is this? But aside from that, really elegant and quick turns. Again, I think if I'm gonna recommend games to someone who's never played board games before but is interested, I wanna pick games that are easy to grasp and when it's your turn, you're not overwhelmed by choices. Um, and this game is very simple. You either uh, pick them from a circle or pick them from the middle. Um, and then put them on your board. With that said, there's a lot of strategy involved. And actually, this game is kind of a mean game. Uh, you can leave, like, let's say you notice that uh, someone can't fit a certain color of tiles on their row. You can kind of leave it for them and make them take it and they'll lose points. Um, so it's got kind of like a take that element in addition to, like, strategizing, okay, which rows should I fill first? Which tiles should I take in order to do that? I know that if, if I take this, this my person might take this and that person might take the next one. Uh, there's a lot going on for what is a very simple game to play. The sequel, sequel to this, uh, Stained Glass of Sintra, is also really good. And I might even prefer that game over this, but they're actually very different games. They share the same core mechanic of grab from a circle or grab from the middle, but there's a lot more going on in Sintra that is totally not in Azul base game. I would recommend Azul first if you are new to the hobby. And if you like Azul, uh, you can maybe go up to Stained Glass of Sintra because it's not that much more complicated, but it is a little more gamey. But I also think that it is a, a different enough game where both games have a place in your collection. Um, but yeah, Azul, really elegant design, really nice pieces. Uh, highly, highly recommend this game. Uh, out of the three games I've said so far, this is the one I'd be most likely to want to play the most often, uh, if asked, because the games are also very quick in this. It's not a very long game. Now let's go on from the hardest game in the list to the easiest game technically to play, uh, at least to play, maybe not to succeed at, and that is Dixit. In Dixit, you have these really gorgeously uh, illustrated cards, a very surreal imagery. And all you have to do is on your turn, you look at the cards in your hand and you say a clue. It could be a word, a sentence, a song. You could say like sadness or you could say like uh, hunger. Um, and what you do is you put that a card down that you think represents that clue. And then everybody else is going to look at their hands and they're going to put down a card that they think matches that clue best. Because what's going to happen is people are going to vote and try to figure out what the original card was. Now, if everyone picks your card right, you're gonna get penalized. So you don't want your clue to be too obvious. Um, at the same time, you don't want it to be too completely obtuse because if no one picks your uh, card, then you also will get penalized. You want some people to recognize it, but not everybody. And then for other players, you wanna have a card that's good, that matches the clue, 
because if people pick your card and not the original card, you will get rewarded as well. It's a point-based system where you just go around a track. Really, really simple game. It's literally, okay, uh, I got cards, say a clue, put on a card, that's it. That's all you have to do. Uh, easy to do concept-wise, but it's very creative. It's a very creative, thinky game. Um, I will say, this game could totally fall flat if you played with the wrong group of people. If you play with people who are too... unimaginative? Or... literal? It might not work so well. Um, it's a game that you want to kind of have a creative group of people together. Like, I don't know if Dixit would work well with my parents, necessarily. Um, because I don't know if they have a... It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of like a weird game to wrap your mind around. But, uh, once you get into it, I think it's really, really fun. Especially with the right group. With the right group of people, this game can be hilarious. Uh, on top of just being a good time. So, yeah. Dixit, great art on the cards. Uh, this was also, looks like a Spiro de Ja winner or nominee? I don't know. Doesn't matter. It means it's good. It's a good game. Actually, now that I think about it, Four of these games are Spiel de Jar winners, because I, th I believe Azul won too. Azul, Dixit, uh, Ticket to Ride, and our next game, Code Names. And I think Splendor, Splendor was nominated. So these are award-winning slash nominated games, as well as ones for your collection. So you know they are good and prestigious for your collection, if you're new to the poppy. Anyways, Code Names. This is a really great party game. Uh, it was a hit, and I, I'm sure you've at least heard of it. I think it took off just as much as, like, say, Ticket to Ride or something like that. But basically, the idea is you have a array of words uh, in, like, a 5x5 five five grid. And you're basically trying to get your teammates to touch the right words uh, based off your clues. So you might say something like... Uh, uh, let's say the words are like pig and bacon. You might say pork too, meaning that there are two cards in the display that match that clue. The catch to this game is that you do not want uh, your teammates to touch tiles that belong to the opposite team because the opposite team has some cards too. There's like, there are red, hidden red cards, hidden blue cards. Uh, there's even like a, a kill card. So it is a really funny thing of like, okay, I don't want this clue. I can't say this clue, because if I say this clue, they might touch this blue tile on accident. Or like, uh, I don't want to. I want. I want to get them a lot of points. Like I want to pick to pick a lot of clues this turn. But if I go too crazy and stretch it out too thin, then they won't get any. Uh, but if I only do one a one word clue or one top card clue, then we're not going to be able to beat the other team. It's a really clever like kind of um, how do I get make connections between words to get my teammates to understand what they need to touch what, without touching the wrong cards. Because there's even a kill card where if anyone touches that card, that team immediately loses. So uh, there's a lot of tension, but it's really fun. You'll have a lot of people going, what are you doing? Like, that's obviously this, but uh, it's 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 a blast. Um, I highly recommend it. Codenames is really good. There's also Codenames Pictures, which I also own, and that has Sort of kind of like Dixit-ish, like sort of surreal pictures on the back. Um, that one's fun too. Uh, and then if you have like a someone you want to play like a two-player game with, Codenames Duet is excellent. Uh, and that's sort of like a variation where you're playing co-op with another person. Um, doesn't matter. All three games are really, really fun in their own way. Uh, I think my favorite is words. I tend to prefer words over pictures, but I think I had a good time with the pictures edition as well. Great sort of thinky, party, team-based game uh, with a lot of word connecting that I enjoy. All right, that was five board games I would recommend to anyone who is new to the hobby. I think all these have a great place on your shelf. Um, and I, what I think most importantly, I think even when you like get deeper into it, I still think these games would be fun. Uh, I keep these games around because not only do I enjoy them, but they are easy to teach. I need some games in my collection where I can pull it out and go, hey, people who don't play board games, here's a game that is pretty fun. And then in that way, that could maybe get them interested in the hobby. You never know. Like, I think for a lot of people, when they play their first sort of designer gateway game, they go, oh, oh, it's not just fucking Monopoly and bullshit. Like, there's actually like games out there that are that an adult can play and enjoy so i think that these games are very have a, like have an importance there's an importance to games that 
are more accessible uh, because that's how you get more people into the hobby. You're not going to get someone into the hobby by pulling out Twilight Imperium 4th Edition or, well maybe you will depending on the person, but um, these games, I've always had great success with them, with uh, new, with all sorts of players, and I'd highly recommend them. So yeah, go get them, play board games. I want board games to be popular. This was a selfishly made video. I have very selfish intentions. Play board games, goddammit.